G'day everyone, in this video we'll be looking at how to randomize some of the attributes of an audio source. We'll do this to avoid having the same sound repeating over and over again that might drive your players insane. Now this will just be a short video to set up our next video where we're going to build a dynamic footstep system. So we're starting off with a new Unity scene and in the project here I've got a bunch of sounds which you can download using the link in the description below and these are just a little thank you for watching my videos. You can use these in your projects without any attribution, but if you do use them, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel. These sounds will all be included in a package that I'm making for the Unity Asset Store, which I'm hoping to release sometime later this year. So I've picked some random sound effects from the package like camera, fire, and footsteps, and because these are all vastly different sounds, you should clearly be able to hear when a new sound is played. So head over to your scripts folder and we'll create a new script. We'll call this Sound Randomizer. We'll open up in the code editor of your choice. And at the top of the script, we'll start off by creating a public array of audio clips. We'll call this sounds. And we'll also want a private reference to the audio source that is on our game object. And we'll call this source. Down in start, we'll want to assign our source. So we can do that by typing source is equal to get component audio source. And down an update, we'll just do a simple input check. So if input dot get key down, and I'm going to use key code dot s for sound. And then we're going to pick a random sound from this array of audio clips that we have up the top here. To do this, we can just type source dot clip is equal to sounds. And then inside our square brackets here, we'll type in random dot range. And we'll pass in zero for the minimum and sounds dot length for the maximum. And then we can play the sound by typing source dot play. So if we head back into Unity and over in our hierarchy, we'll select create audio and audio source, and we'll add our script onto that game object. Now here is our array of sounds. We can lock the inspector up here by pressing this little lock button. And now we can drag in a bunch of random sounds. So we'll take a few of the camera sounds. We'll take in the large sliding door sound. And we'll take in a few of the paper tearing sounds. So now our array is populated with five different audio clips. And if we hit play, each time we press the S key, it's going to assign an audio clip from one of our sounds in the array down here. So we'll hit the S key. Now there's a problem with using sound.play like this, and that is if we spam the S key, the next sound to play will cut off the sound that is currently playing. And sure, in some instances, this kind of behavior might be fine, but a nice simple change to fix this is instead of using source.play, we can type in source.play one shot, and this function takes in an audio clip to play, so we can just pass in source.clip. Now we'll head back and we'll test it again. And we'll spam the S key. We can hear that the sounds won't cut each other off and we'll play the whole way through. So let's head back to the script and we'll randomize the volume each time the sound is played. At the top of the script, we'll create a new public float and we'll call this volume change multiplier. We'll set this to be 0.2F. We're also going to add the range header to this, which we'll set from 0.1F to 0.5F. And what that's gonna do is give us a slider down in the inspector to prevent any numbers that are too extreme getting passed into that variable. Back in the script, just before we call our play one shot, we'll randomize the volume, and we can do this by typing source.volume is equal to random.range, And the lowest volume that we want our sound to play at will be one minus volume change multiplier. The highest volume that our sound can play at is one. So we'll use that for the max volume in the range. We can randomize the pitch the same way that we did the volume. So up the top, we'll create another public float. We'll call this pitch change multiplier. We'll set this to equal 0.2F again and we'll have the exact same range header on that value there. 
So again, just before we play our clip, we'll type in source dot pitch is equal to random dot range. And this time the minimum pitch that we want our sound to play at will be one minus pitch change multiplier. And the maximum will be one plus pitch change multiplier. Now randomizing these two properties should give the sound some really nice variation. And if the same audio clip in the array gets played twice, you won't notice it as much because we're randomizing multiple elements. This works really well with footsteps. So if I save the script and head back into Unity, we'll clear out our array and we'll choose from one of the footstep collections here. So we'll use the gravel footsteps. We'll turn off play on awake and hit play. Now when we hit the S key, you can see that we're randomizing the volume as well as the pitch, as well as the audio clip itself. So when your player walks, so now you can hear that each of the sounds is nicely varied and it's hard to notice any repeated clips. You can play around with these settings to find the perfect balance for what you want your game to sound like. I find that a 0.15 is a nice subtle value. Last thing I'll do for this video is create a new function, call it randomize footstep. And I've just noticed that I named the script round randomizer instead of sound randomizer. Never mind that. And I'll take out the functionality from the update and stick it into this function. So we can have this script on our player object and anytime we want to play a footstep sound, we can call this function. So in the next video, I'll show you how to use this logic to extend the first person controller that comes with Unity's standard assets. And we'll also change the collection of footstep sounds to reflect what kind of surface your player is walking on. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you have any requests for a topic, pop it in the comment section below and I will add it to my schedule. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.